Yao might be thinking, why did Lu Sheng suddenly decide to challenge Lian Jibei? What exactly happened? Well, that was his plan from the very start. However, let's go back a few minutes. Great Grandmaster Jiang, holding a microphone, walked to the center of the stage, just about to announce the national champion on behalf of the Martial Arts Association, when a voice interrupted him. Feeling somewhat displeased, he turned and saw it was Lu Sheng. Although he didn't understand why Lu Sheng interrupted him, but thought that there must have been a reason. The audience's attention shifted to Lu Sheng, who bowed respectfully. His tone shifted, adding a bit of seriousness. Turned out, he hoped Great Grandmaster Jiang would grant him an unusual request. Great Grandmaster Jiang, with a smile, nodded, and encouraged Lu Sheng to state his request openly. Lu Sheng took a couple of steps forward, his demeanor shifting dramatically as he began to speak in a calm and measured tone. He explained that he had joined the tournament to experience the skills of various martial artists and young prodigies who might help him to hone his own martial arts. However, after a brief pause, during which the crowd listened in silence, he suddenly looked up at the martial artists in the stands with a disdainful glance, while telling everyone just how disappointed he was. The crowd was stunned, even for great Grandmaster Jiang. The martial artist's expressions soon turned sour. Just listen to Lu Sheng as he continued that no one during the tournament posed any challenge to him, and he found the matches utterly dull and uninspiring. This revelation left everyone, including the folks from the Seven Divine Martial University, looking at each other in confusion. Zhao adjusted his glasses, and the female vice principal behind him, quite puzzled, asked if Lu Sheng intended to make himself a target for the entire nation's martial arts community. Zhao, his expression tense, and a bead of sweat dripping from his forehead knew this behavior was out of character for Lu Sheng, who was not typically arrogant or oblivious to others. What the hell is he up to? As everyone stared at Lu Sheng in astonishment, his tone shifted abruptly. Turning towards a certain direction, he pointed at the Ji Dao Martial School and said flatly that he was especially disappointed with them, noting that their most promising twin stars seemed to have learned nothing at the school. Suddenly, all the disciples of the Ji Dao Martial School stood up, their eyes filled with anger, and Lian Jibei's face darkened as he stared intently at Lu Sheng, especially after Lu Sheng claimed that the Ji Dao Martial School was merely fishing for fame and was full of trash. Lian Jibei stood up, his face twisted with rage, and his Grand Master aura bristling with murderous intent. However, he managed to contain his anger and sat back down, slamming his chair and loudly demanding what Lu Sheng meant by his words. Lu Sheng looked at him and surprisingly smiled, telling him that he wanted to use the strong martial artists of Ji Dao to sharpen his martial path and perhaps break through to the grandmaster level. But the twin stars were simply too weak. Then, with a focused look, he announced he was going to challenge peak seventh-level grandmaster Lian Jibei. The entire arena fell into a shocked silence, terrifyingly quiet until, a few seconds later, it erupted into chaos. Not only the audience there, but also those watching the live broadcast, including Lu Sheng's family and friends, couldn't believe what they were seeing. Qin jumped up from his seat, clutching his fists tightly, exclaiming that Lu Sheng was going insane. Snowy, on the other hand, remained calm, hands crossed over her Boeing Boeing, thinking that perhaps Lu Sheng really intended to use the strength of a grandmaster to help him break through. But why would he choose someone like Lian Jibei? a man known for his ruthlessness and as a peak grandmaster with whom he had a feud. Lian Jibei didn't mind Lu Sheng's challenge. Matter of fact, this seemed to suit him perfectly. He then let out a cold smirk and leaped onto the stage. While Snowy wasn't sure about Lu Sheng's true intention, she still managed to smile, knowing that if Lu Sheng succeeded, he would become the youngest grandmaster in their nation's history and the first to attain such a rank before the age of 20. Lian Jibei walked onto the stage, not hiding his intent to kill, but still warned Lu Sheng that he had made a terrible choice, and the consequence of that may be death. Lu Sheng, hands in his pockets, showed no fear, or the timid demeanor he had once showed when he hid behind Zhao. Looking nonchalantly at Lian Jibei as if he were no more significant than a disgusting bug, he even made a casual remark, telling Lian Jibei not to worry, as fate would decide their survival on the stage. As everyone began to settle down, a few of them quickly realized why Lu Sheng had acted as he had. However, if he truly needed a grandmaster to challenge, there were several vice principals he could have chosen. There was no need to specifically target Lian Jibei. Zhao let out a sigh, 
thinking that although they were grandmasters, they still fell short of Lian Jibei's level, who was at the peak of the seventh level, just one step away from becoming a great grandmaster. With a personal grudge between them, Lian Jibei might very well aim to kill. Perhaps Lu Sheng was seeking to break through his current level in a life-or-death battle. Yet Zhao's intuition told him that Lu Sheng's aims were not limited to merely advancing to a grandmaster's level. There was likely something else he wanted to do. Meanwhile, back to the stage, Lu Sheng stared intently at Great Grandmaster Zhang, who stood not far from them, as if eagerly seeking his approval. Zhang, stroking his beard, can see just how desperate Lu Sheng was from his eyes. For the first time in many years, he was encountering such a dazzling prodigy, so much so that he dared enough to challenge a peak seventh level grandmaster. Recognizing Lu Sheng's rare courage and spirit, Zhang decided to agree to this duel. He turned to two fellow grandmasters beside him, instructing them to ensure Lu Sheng's safety. One of them chuckled and reassured Zhang, noting that even without their intervention, the grandmasters from the Seven Divine Martial University wouldn't just stand by and watch. With Zhang's blessing, the two of them stood face to face, about ten meters apart. Lian Jibei gazed at Lu Sheng, incredulous that this mere sixth-level martial artist would dare challenge him. Nevertheless, seeing that he had been granted this opportunity, Lian Jibei was resolved not to hold back, preparing to unleash his full power and what he called special mutated ability, aiming to kill Lu Sheng with one hit. As the duel commenced, Lu Sheng looked at Lian Jibei as if he were prey finally caught in a meticulously laid trap. He had been waiting for this moment far too long and had suppressed his own power for just as long. The idea of using Lian Jibei to break through to the seventh level, to hone his martial spirit through a life-or-death challenge, was nothing more than a joke. All he wanted was to kill Lian Jibei with a single punch on the stage, without consequences. Lian Jibei, his face twisted with a cold, murderous intent, slowly advanced toward Lu Sheng, with a sinister smile questioning if he was ready to experience what a true grandmaster is like. As he summoned his full strength, his muscles burst through his clothes, his skin turned green, and his body became covered with scales somewhat resembling those of a lizard or a snake. But Lu Sheng seemed unbothered by the transformation. In a blink, he closed the distance between them. Lian Jibei, eyes wide with disbelief, surprised that he couldn't even keep up. In the next instant, Lu Sheng smiled at him as a visible shockwave emanated from him. He first used his technique to amplify his blood energy. Then he used the second form of the perfect martial path, then the thunder-breathing technique, 25-fold stellar technique, and the divine whale's power were all used together. His fingertips blazed like the sun with the final grandmaster technique of ten suns in the sky. An overwhelming aura swept across the arena, focusing all its energy on that one devastating punch. This took him by surprise, and Lian Jibei had no time to react. His face briefly contorted in horror as he seemed to see a sun hurtling towards him. The last thing he heard was it was time to go to hell. The concentrated power stirred terrifying shockwaves that spread outwards. Everything happened so swiftly that the audience was stunned. By the time Zhang realized he had to intervene, it was already too late. Amidst a deafening roar that filled the arena, he rushed forward, but again he was too late. The smoke cleared to reveal Lu Sheng calmly retracting his fist, while Lian Jibei's upper body had completely vanished, leaving only half of his legs standing in the center of the arena. Zhang He turned furiously towards Lu Sheng, meeting his cold gaze. Just as he was about to say something, he heard Lu Sheng asking him, Do you also want a piece of this? Great Grandmaster, Lu Sheng's eyes radiated an intense battle spirit, leaving Jiang momentarily speechless. He wondered how this young man, who had just slain a peak seventh Grandmaster, had the audacity to challenge him. The arena fell into an eerie silence, just to witness the very little remains of Lian Jibei. Zhao was equally shocked, however. He suddenly realized something. Lu Sheng was not merely seeking an opportunity for a breakthrough. He had, from the very beginning, always aimed to kill Lian Jibei. Meanwhile, other young martial artists watched the scene in disbelief. One murmured with trembling lips, Is he really just a sixth level? Zhao slapped the railing, cold sweat dripping from his forehead, finally knew what Lu Sheng was up to. He was deep in thought, ever since their first meeting in his office. Countless memories flashed through his mind. Perhaps Lu Sheng never wanted to have a martial saint to dictate his future. At the same time, 
Their eyes met. Zhao remembered the advice he had given Lu Sheng as he left the office. Follow your heart. At this moment, he saw in Lu Sheng's eyes that this was his very interpretation of following his heart. Zhang He's mind was swirling with recollections of what Lu Sheng had done earlier, sensing a thick scent of conspiracy, even making him feel as if something was crawling on his skin. Lu Sheng, not even 19 years old, managed to kill a peak 7th level grandmaster with a single punch. All the cunning and planning were nothing short of breathtaking. The fact that even he was part of Lu Sheng's plan just tells how terrifying this young man really was. With complex emotions, Zhang glanced at Lu Sheng, slowly approached him, and tells him that he would report everything truthfully to the Jidao Martial School, as well as to the Martial Saint, Tan Zhongwei. Turning away, he added with a heavy heart, You must take care of yourself. Before leaping off the stage, a little regretful that he didn't have the chance to gauge the gap between himself and an eighth-level great grandmaster. With a sigh of regret, Lu Sheng turned to leave. However, Zhao was already rushing towards him, grabbing Lu Sheng's wrist and urgently pulling him down the mountain. As they sped away, Zhao shook his head continuously, warning Lu Sheng that he had stirred up a storm way too great and they needed to see the principal immediately. Zhao wanted to remind the identity of Lian Ji Bei to Lu Sheng, not expecting Lu Sheng to cut him off mid-sentence and tell him that he already knew Lian Ji Bei was the father of Lian Ye and the older brother of Lian Su, who's the wife of the Ji Dao Martial Saint. He had known this a long time ago from the folders Zhao had previously given him. Suddenly Zhao stopped and stared at him for a moment, then started yelling at him saying, then why would he do this if he already knew everything? However, he shakes his head and tells him that now, only the principal can protect him. Lu Sheng shook off Zhao's grasp and slowly shook his head, thanking him, but refused. Zhao thought Lu Sheng was insane, telling him that even if he didn't think about himself, he should be considering his family or friends. He didn't want Lu Sheng to act rashly out of pride, especially when he was still young and might later live with regret. Frantically, Zhao urged Lu Sheng to hurry before the news reached the Jidao Martial School. Lu Sheng looked up at the sky as a gentle breeze lifted his hair, a smile breaking across his face. He knew Zhao was right. Once Jidao and Lian's family received the news, it would be too late. Shaking his head, he tells Zhao that he can't leave with him just yet. He has one last thing to do. Zhao paused, a sudden realization dawning on him. His expression turned to one of horrified shock as he took another look at Lu Sheng. Perhaps knowing Lu Sheng's next plan, he then tells him that he will be waiting for him in the capital, offering one last ride. Lu Sheng smiled and thanked him again, however. With a shake of his head, he quickly descended the mountain. As he approached the steps, Lu Sheng twisted his neck slightly and then burst forward, sprinting at an incredible speed. Zhao, caught off guard, found himself unable to keep up. He wondered just how powerful is Lu Sheng now. Meanwhile, in White Lake City's high-speed rail station, Lu Sheng's family hurried to buy tickets, though the fastest train wouldn't leave for another 30 minutes. Lu Qing, his sister, looked anxious. The broadcast on TV was disconnected just as they heard her brother was going to challenge a grandmaster. She had no idea what happened next. Their mother, her eyes red, repeatedly asked if there wasn't a faster train. She was deeply concerned about her son's safety. Their father, checking his phone, patiently responded to her. Suddenly, their mother's tears began to pour out. Her husband wrapped his arms around her as he asked Lu Qing to come and comfort her. Lu Qing opened her mouth, but words failed her. Her mind was filled with the voice of her brother saying he was going to challenge a grandmaster. The text from the other day isn't a joke. And was he serious about killing a grandmaster? She thought. She couldn't understand why Lu Sheng would do such a thing. It was way too dangerous. As she approached her sobbing mother, her phone rang. Seeing Lu Sheng's name on the display, everyone's anxiety melted away. Hearing Lu Sheng's voice and his explanations, Lu Qing's expression relaxed. Their mother hurriedly asked what had happened. Lu Qing smiled and reassured her it was all a misunderstanding. The live broadcast was disconnected because of poor signal, and the challenge was merely a staged show to hype everyone up. Handing the phone to their mother, her heart settled as she heard Lu Sheng's voice. She didn't know how worried she had been, but knowing her son was safe brought immense relief. She advised him to rest well and to come home in a few days. Lu Sheng's phone conversation concluded with his mother's long-winded worries while he kept smiling and saying okay to everything. After hanging up, his father chuckled, 
commenting on how his wife could sometimes be overly fussy. Lu Qing, however, found something odd about the whole situation. She didn't remember the past tournament that included such an act. Nonetheless, the safety of her brother was what mattered most to her. As the family chatted and made their way out of the station, the mother didn't forget to remind her husband to get a refund for the tickets, lamenting that the cancellation fee could have brought a lot of groceries. Unbeknownst to them, from a corner nearby, a man wearing a hat watched them leave. He made a call and reported the family's movements to someone on the other end. Upon hearing the other side thanking him, he replied modestly, mentioning that since he was paid, he would ensure the job was done, especially since there was also an order from the general. After the call, he glanced at his phone, which displayed a private message. Ji Dao Marshall School Grandmaster Lian Ji Bei was killed by Lu Sheng. Sweat trickled down the man's forehead as he marveled just how terrifying this 19-year-old kid was. Meanwhile, Lu Sheng, after ending his call, felt somewhat reassured knowing the Eastern Military District would keep his family and friends safe. With his current speed, it didn't take him very long to arrive at a KTV lounge in a nearby city. Just before entering, Zhao's words echoed in his ears, questioning whether Lu Sheng feared retaliation from the Lian family and the Jidao Marshall School. To be honest, Lu Sheng did fear. He feared a lot. Matter of fact, he feared losing everything he had. But there were things one couldn't avoid out of fear. He had made a promise, and it was time to fulfill it. At the same time, he dreaded even more the thought of living his life like a puppet under someone's watch. As he approached the private room on the top floor, using his psychic ability, he sensed two people inside. A young man was breaking down on the couch, hands covering his face, repeatedly mumbling about his father's death. The other person, in disbelief, asked who had killed Grandmaster Lian. Tears rolled down the young man's cheeks. The phone call hadn't specified details, only told him to get home as soon as possible. Just as they opened the door to the room, they were greeted by Lu Sheng standing at the door. They asked him who he was, and Lu Sheng simply looked at him and said, Lian Ye, your father is looking for you, and I am here to take you to him.